Hello everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and demonstrate our electronic sea scooter. Um, everything you see here is what you'll get with your item. You'll go ahead and get the sea scooter itself, along with this this mesh carrying bag, the battery, the charger, um, O-ring set, some lubrication, um, a manual air pump, which I'll show you how to use later, and a user manual. I highly recommend to read the user manual th uh, thoroughly before you uh, actually start using this product. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basic features of the unit as well as how to install the battery. So the unit is fairly lightweight. As you see here, um, if you look at the unit itself, um, the little on and off switch is right here and you have two two speed throttles which are right here so before you start installing the battery um, make sure you charge the battery which will take about four to six hours uh, the battery charger has a light indicator which will indicate that it's full so once it's full you got you can go and install it the way to install it is if you look at these two little straps right here you have to turn these straps towards you in a 90 degree angle and move these out. Move these out of the way and then you could go ahead and remove the cone. Once the cone is removed you'll see a little air box right here. This air box allows the unit to float um, you know when it's in the water. It's, it's good for snorkelers um, you know so you could get to the, wa uh, to the, to the surface uh, quicker. However if you're diving you want to go ahead and, and remove this. Just be aware that the unit will sink if you remove this unit. If you want to go ahead and you know adjust the unit to have a neutral buoyancy, you would have to remove this little lid right here and insert some type of weight like rocks or any type of weight in there and and, and keep testing it and make sure it's a uh, you know has neutral buoyancy. Uh, this unit is very tight to to prevent water from getting into the unit. So in order for you to remove it, I, you have to place it back into the unit itself and twist counterclockwise. So I'm going to do that now just to demonstrate how to remove it. See you'll see a little seal right there, a little o-ring. See? So you will go ahead and put the additional weight in there. The lubrication I mentioned earlier, it's go ahead and make sure that it's all lubricated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and insert this O-ring back in. Once the O-ring is back in, you could go ahead and uh, put the lid back on. Just be aware that when you do put the uh, the unit back in, that when you put it in, these two little nubs right here have to align to the to where those little latches were earlier. So if I were to try to put the cone on right now, it wouldn't go on properly. You will have to twist this the lid tight until these two parts are aligned with here. So just keep that in mind. So after you do that, if you look inside the unit, you'll see that there's a little air vent cap. Normally this is out. This should never be closed in, but earlier I closed it. But this should be out. Uh, in order for you to access the compartment uh, where the battery goes, you have to take your manual air pump and if you look closely on there, you'd have to screw this in like so. Before you do so, I, for, I forgot one little step. If you look in your bag of O-rings, there's a little rubber piece right here. This is a big long rubber band. 
um, go ahead and route this rubber band through here and attach it to this little strap right here like so and do the same thing for this side like so then you can go ahead and attach the, the manual air pump to it I'll explain why right now why we need this little rubber band okay so that's on tight what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna push on this but I want you to to notice how this this thing um, this lid right here will actually pop up uh, the reason why we have this rubber band here is to prevent this lid from going all over the place so I'm gonna go ahead and do one quick push on the air vent manual air pump see as you can see it just lifted up so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this rubber band piece and I'm gonna detach this real quick all this area right here is lubricated just to let you know so right here this is where the battery compartment goes Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the battery. There's a little latch right here on the side that shows you how to, where it's supposed to go. There we go. Pop this unit in. And what you have to see is how I'm going to go ahead and route this, the wiring in so it doesn't obstruct anything when I close the lid back on it. Make sure it is properly lubricated on the side. It should be, um, it comes pre-lubricated so you don't have to worry about that. Just later on when you notice there's not that much lubricant, then you got to go ahead and, you know, add a little bit on there. So next step is to go ahead and put back this lid so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back just make sure the sides are aligned right here just like a little nub right here that that shows you kind of general just center that and you should be okay so kind of push this down and it should create a flush tight seal once that's tight go ahead and now seal this in if this unit is going to be stored for and not used for 24 hours it's better to take the battery out and store it separately from the unit also um, it to leave this little air vent plug out that's very important prevents the buildup of gas inside your your unit so once that's in go ahead and put your put your um, air box in put your lid back in uh, the, your cone you notice on the side there's like a little nub that shows you where to line up and go ahead and put your latch back on and close it down this locks it in place and the unit is ready to use There's a couple other things that you need to note about this unit. Uh, make sure that if children use this, there's adult supervision around. Um, this unit also cannot go below 100, but cannot go 100 feet below surface water, which is approximately 30 meters. So be, you know, once again, this is made to go super deep. Um, another thing to note is that this does, uh, the, this unit will sound a beep alarm um, when it reaches. 20 under 20 percent battery life so that's um, you know something to keep in mind but remember you're being out in the water and you can't really hear that so just be, be really safe when you use this unit also if you notice right here right here if you want to go ahead and attach this unit uh, you know to your equipment you could go ahead and do that by pulling this part out and running your string through here 
and it'll go ahead and grasp onto whatever you have. But make sure you loop it around. Um, the on and off switch is right here. So once it's in this position, it's on. If it's in this position, it's off. So, and so we'll leave it on right here. Um, you got two triggers right here. This trigger is for normal operation at normal speed, and this trigger is for high speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demonstrate how you know how the triggers work, but you will also hear the the low the beep sound for the low battery indicator. So this is at normal speed. This is at high speed.